traveler, hallelujah, Amen. Uh, a true scriptural biblical evangelist. Amen. And uh, so uh, you're going to see signs and wonders. You're going to see the power of God released in this yes. place. And uh, I know God's going to expand you through the preaching and the teaching of Joe Pierce. So Joe Pierce, my friend. Praise God. Amen. First of all, I want to thank this church for supporting us every single month. And I want to give you some praise reports of what your finances have done. Because don't you think you should know when yes, you sow a yes, seed, yes. what you're sowing into? Yes. First of all, we just had a tent revival in um, Lodi. Amen. We had the first night, 100 people came up to the altor. Oh, wow. uh, in the week, uh, they came up for salvation, rededication, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Throughout the week, we had over 100 people except Jesus Christ, Amen. all fruit, that is going into your account in heaven. Amen. 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 We saw 75 people get filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. All fruit in heaven. Amen. We had wonderful miracles. We had a lady come out of a wheelchair and walk for the first time. Thank you, God. But I just found out that not only did she walk for the first time, I just found out a couple of days ago, Ashley, she had had a stroke and she couldn't talk. So we got her to say a few words, and now she's talking fluently. Wow. Wow. We had another lady that came that was scheduled to have a colonoscopy bag, and she came the Sunday night and she got prayed for. She went to the bathroom for the first time on her own without a catheter. Amen. She, she said she wasn't bleeding anymore and she didn't have any pain going to the bathroom. And their tent revival went all week, and she, as of today, does not have to have a bag, and she's going to the bathroom normal. Amen. 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 That back. Yeah. yeah. And he yeah. didn't even get prayed for. I just said, anybody that needs healing, come on forward. And he said that we have a carpet. We have a carpet, like, you know, so people don't. It was like on a blacktop. It was in a Kmart parking lot. So we just had a carpet so people, when they fall, you know, they didn't crack their heads. Yeah. They were trying to catch them so they didn't hit their heads. But um, he, just, he just got as far as the carpet, and he was totally healed. He felt heat go all through his body. He would had uh, fifth, three, three long of uh, his back vertebrae crushed, and he had been in total pain, no more pain. And these are people testifying months after that they're totally healed. We have no idea how many people. The first night, a few people got upset. Because you always have the devil, too. You know, you have the Holy Ghost, and then you have the devil. Oh, yeah. First night, some people got upset and said, you sure didn't handle that good. And I go, well, don't worry about how I handle things. I was busy praying for people. Well, this guy over here is throwing up all over the, all over the carpet. And uh, three or four people that I know, so I told them, look, just keep, just take care of him. I was busy praying. Yeah. And I know who knows how to do what. And I said, you guys, take care of him. And uh, they said, you just let the guy throw up. And, and you're praying for people all over the place. And I said, yes. And he was getting set free of all kinds of devils. Yes. Right. And I said, yes. so, you know, it is okay for Jesus to have demons in the service. <laughs> it's okay for Channel of Love to have demons getting set free in the service. Sure. So as long as they don't go back with the demons. Right. And they yeah. get set free. That's right. And so we are on the verge of a great revival. That's right. Amen. And my message today is about we're on the verge of the greatest revival that has ever hit planet Earth. Thank you, Jesus. I also just got back from the Native American, which was um, a challenge. Let, let me say without going any further, a challenge, a very challenge. But, um, and I love the Native Americans. Some of you have heard the story before about my brother-in-law that's gone to be with the Lord. Because he told me that he smokes peyote, and he gets into the spirit with God. And I said, you know, Tommy Charles, you're a born-again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking uh, Christian. I says, and the Holy Spirit is grieved that you have to have peyote. 
and then you think that peyote is going to get you in the presence of God instead of the Holy Ghost. I said, how you have offended the Holy Spirit. And he just turned to me and said, you just don't like Native Americans, you hate Indians. I went. And he left and he went to talk to me again until just before he died. I said, I love Native Americans. It has nothing to do with that. So I was at a Native American uh, White Earth, which I go every year. And anytime you guys want to come on a mission trip, really join me on a mission trip. Uh, I have one more left this year. I've had six or seven this year. I have one left. It's in Belize. If anyone wants to go to Belize, talk to me after. But anyway, I was telling Pastor, on the Native American, we've never really had, uh, on the village, you know, at, at the campground, we've had awesome moves of God. One time, all, all the youth came, and there must have been about 30 youth came, Native Americans. They all got saved. They all got filled with the Holy Spirit. They all were all laid out on the floor, and they didn't know what hit them. And they were going home, and their, they told their parents that they were on the floor, and their parents got upset. Another one time we went, and the children, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, got filled with the Holy Spirit, and we couldn't get them to stop speaking in tongues until three or four in the morning. So we had to carry them. Now you've got to remember, these kids were picked up in buses, brought to the church service, and taken home at three in the morning. We got in trouble with the tribal people. What are you doing with our children? And some of the children, when they got up to go to school the next day, couldn't speak. They were still speaking in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the little girls got on the bus that had not gotten the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And she gets on the little bus that's on a village, you know, it's like on the tribal bus. So she's on the tribal bus, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit hits her on her way to school. She gets up out of her bus seat. She kneels down in the middle of the aisle where the bus is going, puts her hands up in the air and starts speaking in tongues and never stops speaking in tongues. And so they had to call us and say, what are you guys doing to these children? And so the pastor had to go to the council of the Native American and try to explain to them what was happening. Of course, they looked at him like he's wacko. But this year, I went to another Native American village and the pastor was kind of like, well, we don't really know you, Sister Joan. I've just come in in the last 10 months, and I've heard good reports about you, but we don't really know you. So let me tell you some of the guidelines and blah, 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 blah. I honored his guidelines. Honest, I did. I honored them. He said, now, this is how long you can preach, and this is what you can do, and this is what you can't do. I honored it. I only preach 10 minutes. I only preach 10 minutes. But I cried out to God. I said, God, you have to do a miracle. I mean, I don't know if you, you know, but I don't know if it just works. I said, Holy Spirit, this is Joan Pierce calling. We have a problem. <coughs> the problem is I have 10 minutes. So Holy Spirit, do something in 10 minutes. Of course, you don't usually tell the Holy Spirit what to do, but I, I wasn't telling the Holy Spirit what to do. <coughs> I was just saying, I need help. Because it says he's your helper. Yeah. Right? The Holy Spirit's your helper. Yeah. I prayed, Holy Spirit, I only have 10 minutes and so, I only preached six, <laughs> and the Holy Ghost fell. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I did an altar call, and it's the first time ever. And the church is different, but we're not in a church. We're out on the village. Yeah. We're out with the Native Americans. These are not church people. All of a sudden, we had chairs, all these chairs. And I said, if you want to receive Jesus, come up here. Now, you don't usually do altar calls like that with the Native Americans. You, you know, they just won't get out of their... They won't come up. They don't come up. Are you hearing me? <coughs> 25 people got out of their seats, walked up to where I was, and started bawling. 
The Native Americans don't cry easy. I'm telling you, they all started crying. Five-year-olds and six-year-olds were crying. Tears were running down their face. And they were, grown-ups were crying. Older people were crying. They were all crying. And they started shaking. They were up there went like this. They don't even know that you're supposed to put your hands up. They are not Pentecostal. They have just got saved. They don't know any of this. All of a sudden, their hands are going up, and they're shaking and shaking and shaking, and, and they're praying and asking Jesus into their heart. And then I did a call for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and about 10 more came up. There were so many people. I said, well, I don't have time. I'm supposed to be done in 10, or 10 more minutes. He gave me another 10 minutes to pray for people. <laughs> anyway, I said, I don't have time. So I said to some of the people that were on a mission trip, I had eight or nine on a mission trip with me. I said, team, mission team, come up, start praying for them. They started falling. They started falling on the ground, and they were speaking in tongues. And the pastor said to me after, Native American pastor, what happened? Did somebody die? that I don't know about? <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? He said, why are all these people crying? He said, I was crying. My wife was crying. I said, don't feel bad. I was crying. Then I was preaching. Tears were running down my face. I could not stop crying and stop shaking. Whatever happened to, got me, got the team, got everybody in their seats, got everybody that came to the front. The, every person in the, in the place was shaking under the power of God. I'm telling you, we're on the verge of a revival. Amen. Amen. We need to know that we're not moved by what we see on the news. We are not moved by what, who says what, who does what. I don't care who does what. God knows who's going to be president of the United States. He knows what's going to happen. Father, we come before you and we ask you for a mighty move of God this morning. I ask that you shake us to the roots. I ask that you shake us, shake us, shake us, shake us. Take everything in us that's not of you out of us. Every day. It's not of you. You do a miracle this day. Shake us to our core. That's all that shows in us is Jesus. That all that comes out of us is the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That the Word will see that Christians are walking in power for the final hour. A move of God like we've never seen before. Use us. Change us. Transform us into your image. And we give you praise. And we give you glory. Yes, Lord. If you're ready, listen to me. If you are ready, God's waiting on you. God is waiting on you. Are you hearing me? Yes. We want to see revival. We're crying for revival. We're asking for revival. But revival comes when you finally get sick of you. Amen. You have to get sick of you. Amen. You have to look at your Christian walk and say, yuck, yuck, yuck. yuck, yuck, yuck. Get over ourselves. Amen. Get over it. Get over ourselves. You've got to turn off your TV, turn off your iPhones, turn off this, turn off, turn off the world. And get serious. Get serious with God. Yes. Turn with me in your Bibles to Joel. Joel chapter 2, verse 12. It says in verse 12, Joel 2, 12. Now therefore, says the Lord, this is what God's saying. It's an Old Testament, but you know in the New Testament it talks about it just before the day of Pentecost. So this here, it's really a prophecy for what happened in the book of Acts. Now therefore, says the Lord of hosts, turn to me with all your heart, yes. with fasting and weeping and with mourning, and rent your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great in kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. God is saying to you and I that we need to know that he wants our heart. He's sick of churches. Oh, did I say that? Come on, preach it. Amen. He's sick of churches doing the same thing over and over and over and over. It's not the pastor's fault. You have a pastor, you have two pastors here. 
that want revival with every yes. fiber of their being. Are you hearing me? Yes. 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 They, they all right here yes. are probably reading everything they can on revivals. And they are crying for revival. Amen. But they can't make the revival happen. Revival comes when you, each of every one of you, carry the anointing on you. Yes. You carry the revival. Right. You become a revivalist. Yes. I want you to start praying different. I started praying different about oh eight nine years ago. I know everybody says I'm an evangelist, but I don't. I don't call myself an evangelist. I have been praying for about eight nine years, maybe now. Lord, make me a revivalist. Yes. Amen. Lord, make me a revivalist. Amen. And that's what's happening. And you ask God. You, every one of you, cry out to God. Spend time in His face. I mean. Yes. Get in his face. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's okay to get in his face. He yes. likes it. Amen. You're saying, why aren't you rude? No, he said, knock. Yeah, Meant means Lord. put a demand on me. That's right. I said, Lord, do what you have to do to Joan Pierce. Yes. Do what you have to do to Joan Pierce and Marty Pierce to break us both that we will just go from revival to revival to revival to revival to revival, which is happening. You know, I'm just going to share a story because God is so good. Yeah. You know, I, I hated to share this story because sometimes you share a story and then everybody decides not to give you nothing. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yes. So don't let this story change what you were going to give. <laughs> All right, because sometimes when you get blessed, everybody goes, well, she got, they got blessed, so let's just put in a dollar. <laughs> You put in what God tells you to do. Amen. Because you get to be part of what God's doing. Amen. You know what? We asked in our newsletter for almost uh, two years. You, some of you get our newsletters. And we've asked. We needed 27000 to get this tent ready. Get this ready. Get this ready. This ready. This ready. This ready. And we didn't have no tent meetings. Now in the natural you say, what are you, local in the Cavessa? <laughs> Why would you take 27000 or $30,000? and put it into something and you have nothing ready to do with anything to do with it. Right? You think you're crazy. But when the Holy Spirit starts speaking to you in here, Amen. and the Holy Spirit starts speaking to Marty inside, and the Lord told us, get ready for the revival that's coming to America. Get ready, yes. get ready, get ready, get ready for the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Get your heart right. Yes. Repent, fast, Seek God yes. diligently, like the scripture I just read, and get ready. So we're begging everybody. I hate begging people. So for years we put it in our newsletter. We need this, we need this, we need lights, we need this, we need a generator. We need a new this, we need that. Mm. Nothing. I think one person gave us a thousand and somebody gave us five hundred. That's not too that's not too close to and we always get blessed here. But that's to keep the ministry going. I mean, you've got to keep the ministry going. You can't tuck it away in the bank because it takes so much to run a ministry. But anyway, and Marty knew and I knew. And we didn't know how it was all going to come about. But the last 10 days that we were in Florida, we were preaching all over Florida and New York and on the East Coast. And we'd been asking for this stuff for knocking putting the demand on God. Yes. When he says, seek, knock, the door shall be open. It means put a demand on God. Yes. And so we cried out to God. Yes. First of all, we cried, make us revivalists. Make us revivalists, God. We don't want no more services. We're sick of services. We're sick of everything just the way it is. Take us to a higher level. We've been at this level long enough. Take us to a higher level. That's why this last tent meeting, yeah. people, people got healed just sitting in their seats. People yeah. were getting healed during praise and worship. People were getting changed and transformed without anybody laying hands on them. Amen. It was wonderful. It was just wonderful. Of course, in the midst of it was a storm. But, you know, Satan's always punching at us. So then we're praying and praying. And anyway, to make a long story short, we had one tent meeting scheduled, one. We hadn't had a tent meeting for like five years. So the tent's just sitting there and I was crying, God, I have a tent that sits a thousand people. 
I have 500 chairs and it's just sitting there doing nada. To me, that was like sin. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If God gives you a tool and it's not being used, it's sin. That's right. Come on. That's right. Especially when people are dying and going to hell. I wonder how many people have gone to hell during that five years. But there was nothing I could do about it. I was beating my head, begging pastors to do it. Well, 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 whatever. So pretty so soon I did, Marty says, you haven't been talking to people about the tent very much. I said, I got tired of it. I'm just being honest. I got tired of rejection. No, I shouldn't have been because they're not rejecting me. They're just rejecting that. But I got tired of pounding and knocking on doors that kept shutting. <coughs> anyway, we had one tent meeting scheduled in Lodi. It was in May of this year. We get ready to leave and in 10 days, God, God, my God. <laughs> He's up to something, Pastor. Yeah. He's up to something. Yeah. Yeah. He's up to something. Some man says, what do you need to get this harvest in? I said, we've got this huge tent, but we, there's so many things that we don't have. What do you need? We need a new trailer. He said, I'll buy you one. 16000 I went, wow. $16,000 trailer. We need a stage. Somebody says, here, here's 10000 by the stage. He said, what else do you need? I said, we need lights. All of a sudden, Costco had a sale on lights. <laughs> Amen. They don't usually have lights, like what we need in the tent. Those kind of lights. That same thing, actually. <laughs> Except it's kind of dark. But anyway, we'll have to put some different light bulbs in it. All of a sudden, we got the lights. Somebody else said, what else do you need? Generator. All of a sudden, bang, bang. So then Marty says, well, all this money, we're 7,000 short. I says, yes. Yeah. So he says to me, don't go in debt for the 7,000. But I heard the Holy Spirit say, you need to be ready. My harvest is coming in. You need to be ready. I'm not holding back no more. That's what God said. I'm going to cause revival fires to sweep America. Yes, amen. Amen. And People are afraid. Yes, they're afraid. I know they shouldn't be afraid, but the unsaved are afraid. And actually, as far as that goes, Christians are afraid. They're stocking up food and getting guns and all kinds of stuff. They're really afraid, too. And that's good. It's good. You're saying, what? Y'all say, what? You wouldn't have come to the Lord if something hadn't happened in your life to mess you up. Amen. Right? Yes. As long as everything was peaches and cream, all the money in the bank, no problems with your family, would you have been up to the Lord? No. He catches us when we're at the end of ourselves. And you don't know where to go. And then you just need somebody out there saying, here's the way, here's the truth, here's the light, his name is Jesus. Yes, amen. And you need somebody out there sharing the light, showing the light, bringing the light into darkness. Whatever way. <coughs> yes, amen. Amen. So we're 7,000 short, and Marty said, no, no. We're too deep in debt on the credit card. I said, uh-uh. He said, honey, no. I said, yes. He said, no. I said, yes. I said, we have to do it. He said, why? I said, because I believe with all my heart that God's God is waiting on us. Yes. to get it ready. He's been speaking to us for four or five years. He said, but we don't have but one tab anymore. Why would we go get in the hole? I said, I don't care. I don't know how it works. All I know is we got to be ready. Now listen to me, every one of you, please. We're trying to get a tent ready, but we're also having to get our hearts ready. Yes. Are you hearing? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yes. So maybe God's not calling you to run a tent across the United States, here and there and everywhere. But God is saying to every one of you, get ready. Yes. Yes. Get your heart ready. Yes. 
Rent your heart, fast, pray. Get whatever garbage is in you out of you so you will be on the front lines ready to go lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, do the miracles that God's called you to do. God is telling his church, get ready now and we're running out of time. Because revival has already started. Revival has started. We're seeing glimpses of it here and there. What happened on the Native American reservation? Blew my mind. The pastor kept saying to me, he was so funny. He's a new pastor. He's only been pastoring there 10 months. And he said, why is everybody crying? Did somebody on the reservation die? I said, no, nobody died. And why are these four-year-olds and five-year-olds crying? And we can't get these children to stop crying. You know it's one thing when grown-ups cry. It's another thing when you got four and five-year-olds and seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds and 13-year-olds weeping at the altar, shaking violently, and they don't know what hit them. Yeah. They don't know what hit them. When I got back to Christian retreat, I went to my room. Marty and I was in the hotel room. And when we came out to dinner in the cafeteria, it was a buzz. Everybody was walking up to us. We heard a revival broke forth. We heard that there was a great revival on the reservation today. And it was like the talk of everybody. And, and I didn't preach that night. I wish I had it. Because I would have said, you can have it. You can have it. Damn, you can have it. You can have it. Are you hearing me? Amen. So we went ahead and went and did that 7,000. And when I got home, Somebody walked up to me and handed me seven thousand. <laughs> Before the credit card bill even came in, I had the seven thousand. Hallelujah. God wants us, and the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And I'm going to go on with my scriptures. And then go with me to verse fourteen. Who knows if he will? Be uh, turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Verse 15, blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children, the nursing babies, and let the bridegroom. Are you the bridegroom? Yes. Um, you know, it talks about the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all slept and slumbered, slumbered. You all know that's in Matthew 25. But anyway, they all slept and slumbered. God is saying, wake up, church. Amen. You're running out of time. Do you want to be see the great revival sweep past you? Yep. No. Do you want to see the great revival sweep past you, or do you want to be part of it? Yes. Amen. That's what our cry is. Mar Marty and I's cry is, we want to be on the front lines, front edge, right in front, right front and center. We do not want this revival to sweep over us because we're dull and we've been spending too much time just watching television and playing video games and gabbing with everybody on the phone. We don't want to be so dull that we slept and slumbered and that we missed this great wave of revival that sweeps America <coughs> and the world is right. Jesus. Amen. And Jesus is going to have everybody that will be saved be saved before the Antichrist shows up. Amen. And once everybody that will be saved is saved and the last person says, Dear Jesus, come into my heart, we're all going to get out of here. So how many of you want to get out of here faster? <laughs> we got work to do. That's right. We got work to do. And then it goes on in verse 17. It says, let the priest and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Now let them say, spare America. Yes. Spare America. Yes. Spare America. I know it doesn't say that, but I'm saying it. And do not give your inheritance as a reproach. The world hates Christians. The world absolutely hates Christians. They don't want you to say Jesus. They don't care if you say God. Because if you say God, there's all kinds of God. There's this God and that God and this God. Thousands of gods. India has tons of gods. 
You know, I've just been asked to go to um, Pakistan. And what they've done, um, a guy read my book, Let's Go Fishing. And he translated it into the Pakistani language. And uh, we gave him some money. Actually, he's got $6,000. And he says, Sister Joan, he says, uh, don't you want some money back for all these books? Because we're selling them. I said, no. He said, but that's your royalty. And I said, I don't care about royalty. He says, what do you want us to do with all the money we keep making off your books? I said, buy more books. <laughs> he said, don't you want some kind of a dollar for each book? I said, no. Just keep making more books. Already there's like, uh, I think 6,000 books floating all over. Come on. Change into the Pakistani language on how to evangelize God. and how to share the gospel. Yep. I see someone who wants me to come to Pakistan. I said, I don't need to. I'm already there. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you know, if God tells me, I told him, this is how it works. Marty said, uh-uh. Marty said, uh-uh. Uh, Marty's only said, uh-uh, one other time. He never tells me when I can go and when I can't go. He said, uh-uh, one, 911. Some of you heard that story. He wasn't going to let me go to New York. I said, God, we have a problem. You know how they say, Houston, we have a problem? <laughs> I would say, God, we have a problem. Marty says, no, you tell me to go. So I need to honor my husband, because that's what the Bible right. says. Amen. So unless you change him, I'm not going. Yeah. Right. Well, that night, Marty had a vision and a dream, and the Lord came to him and said, let your wife go to New York. I will protect her. I will send people with her, which everything that the Lord told him happened. Praise so the, the people from Pakistan was just with me. At this last uh, meeting, they sat at the table with me and Marty, and we'd like Joan to come to Pakistan. We got in the hotel room, and Marty said, uh-uh. He <laughs> said, I love you too much. You are not going to Pakistan. So then later, I had coffee with the uh, pastors, and I said, let me tell you, and Marty was still in the hotel room. I said, I'm just going to be up front and tell you how it works. And I said, well, we, we wanna, we're going to have a big crusade. We're going to use some of the money. Everybody loves you. They read your book. We're going to have no problem getting 10,000 people. Believe me, I'd love to go. I said, this is how it works. One, I haven't heard God tell me to go to Pakistan. Amen. Okay? Amen. I haven't heard God tell me to go to Pakistan at all. I'm going to Belize because God told me to go to Belize. I go where God tells me to go. I said, so here's how it works. First... God's got to speak to me, not you. I know you want me to come to Pakistan, but, you know, you're not God. Wonderful. Thank you, Pastor. He said, but we have big crusade. I said, that's fine. But still, got to hear God. Amen. Yeah. So once I hear God, then I'll tell you when I hear God. I said, then Marty said no. So that means once I hear God, which I haven't heard God yet, then God has to speak to Marty. So I said to the Pakistani pastor and his wife, this is how it works. You pray. When I hear God, then God will speak to Marty, and we will be there. Because if God wants us there, we will be there. Amen. And Marty will come with me or bless me or whatever. Because everything we do has to be that way. Amen. It has to be that way. Yes. So go on with me in your Bible. So America wants to shut up everything to do with Christians. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then right, verse 17 again. Let the priests and the ministers to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O God, Lord, and do not give your heritage to be a reproach. That the nation should rule over them. Is our nation ruling over us? Come on. Yeah. Do you believe in abortions? No. But yet when we pay taxes, we're paying for people to have abortions. Yeah. Does that mean our nation is ruling over us? Yes. Yes. Do you believe in gay marriages? No. Okay, but you have no say anymore because the government has ruled over us, right? Mm -hmm. That the nation should rule over them. 
Why should they say among the people, where's your God? What is America saying? You Christians are wimps. <laughs> I'm sorry. But let me tell you, they are going to bow their knees. Yes. That's right. One way or the other. Amen. Because our God is an awesome God, and he is not going to let us be a reproach any longer. Amen. Amen. He is going to cause a wave of Holy Spirit revival yes. that will sweep America to such a degree that the schools will come to the churches and say, what yes. must we do? Yes. And the people will come and say, we don't know how to get set free from drugs. What do we do? I'm telling you, the whole world is going to turn upside down and come to the church yes. and cry out to us for help. Yes. Because that's what happens during revival. Real revivals, the police department comes to the church. The government comes to the church. People get saved and your town gets upside down, turned around, and all of a sudden they don't want to do this no more and they don't want to do this no more. And they'll fight. They'll fight on our behalf yes. because yeah. God, because God, yes. our God. Look what it says. Sorry about my nose, you guys. Then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. You know what? God's actually looking down from heaven. Yes. He's probably saying, would you look at my church? Would you just look at my church? I've got to go down there and do something. Because my Bible says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. My church is going to be white without spot, without wrinkle. So the only way it's going to get fixed is if I go down there and do something. Because they've been trying for 2,000 years ago and they've really made a mess of it. Can we save Madeira? Can, can you save Madeira without God's help? No. Can you save America without God's help? No. Can any of us do anything? No. No. We can. Mm -hmm. But we can. Yes. Amen. Amen. If we don't humble ourselves yes. and cry out like we've never cried out before. Yes. And cry for revival like we've never cried before. Right. And not just little prayers. I mean just saturate, saturate, saturate. Like I love what you said to me once about a bunch of Coliseum people getting together and praying all night. I was so honored. I got to go to the White House. I think I shared this before. I got to go to the White House. And they asked me, I don't have any idea how it happened. They asked me if I'd go to Congress. They said it's called Capitol Hill. I'd never been to Washington, D.C. The hill's like this high. <laughs> you know, I was thinking it was uh, something on a hill. But I, it's only a hill that's just kind of like that high. But I went to Capitol Hill, and they said, Sister Joan, would you preach on Capitol Hill to the senators? I said, me? Me? Why don't you get T.J. Jakes or me, Joan Pierce? Would you? I said, yes. You have seven minutes. <laughs> I drove a long way just to go preach seven minutes. Because seven minutes with senators, I already know what God can do with seven minutes. Amen. I know what God can do with six minutes. I know what God can do with 30 seconds. I know that it's not Joan Pierce. I have no idea what happened when I preached at, at Capitol Hill. I had to leave to go preach. So I told them that as soon as I get through with my seven minutes, I've got to go and get in the car and get to where I'm preaching. I had senators following me, out, walk, I'm getting out of the meeting and they're following me down the hall yelling at me, wait, wait, let me give you my card, wait, 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 I haven't even called them yet. That was way back in May. I go, well, I don't know when I'm going to call them, but God didn't tell me to call them, I just have the card somewhere, and then when God says, I will. Behold, I send, now look what he says, He's at verse 18, and I'm going to wrap it up, and then I want to. Uh, well, I have a few more scriptures. And the Lord will be zealous for, for, for his land and pity his people. So the Lord's pitying us. And the Lord will answer and say to his people, we are his people. Yes. This is for Israel, but we are now his chosen people. We are part. We've been engrafted in. 
and say to his people, Behold, I will send you grain and new wine and oil, and you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach against the nations. Are you hearing me? He says, I'm going to do something that's going to bring you new grain. Grain represents the harvest. Hallelujah. New oil represents the anointing. Yes. Yeah. He's going to bring a new harvest, a wave of revival, a wave of, of evangelism. Evangelism is going to be the front forward, front line. It's going to be everybody wants to talk about Jesus. And nobody's going to be ashamed of this gospel. Everybody's going to be Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. And they're not going to get us to shut up. That's right. We refuse to shut up. Amen. And the Holy Spirit's going to blow. A blow of freshness on us. Somebody, somebody come up and play on the keyboard. That's going to blow a freshness on us. <coughs> and it says in verse 23, Be glad, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down to you, the former rain and the latter rain, together. The former rain was the day of Pentecost, and the latter rain is God's last great... Are you hearing? Yes. God's last great, great outpouring, like we've never seen before. One month. Amen. Amen. In one month, that's right. He can wrap it up so fast. Yeah. He's going to wrap it up so fast. All it takes is the Holy Spirit to just blow on us. Come on, God. It just takes the Holy on, Spirit Lord. to blow on us. And it takes you and I to say, God, oh God. Yes. <laughs> blow on me, Lord, everything yes. on my life, Lord. Yes. <laughs> it takes us to say, God, yes, God. do whatever you have to. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Change me. Yes. Rearrange me. Yes. Rebuke me. Yes. Break me. Yes, Lord. Take this vessel that I have and make it what you want. Yes, I want to be part of the greatest move of God. I want to be part of the latter rain. And you said that the threshing floors will be full of wheat. Yes. And the vats will overflow with new wine. That's what I want to see. Ooh. Hold on, I can't. Ooh. The threshing floor shall be filled with wheat that's harvest. Then the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil, which means anointing. Ooh. If you are saying to yourself, I'm sick of what I am as a Christian. Ooh. I want God to do something and change me. Ooh. I don't know where you are, but I can't handle myself anymore. I don't like Joan Pierce. Ooh. I want to go to a new level. Sure, the devils are going to try to stop us. Ooh. But we got to be ready, because something's going to happen in this United States and world that's catastrophic. I don't say the word right, but y'all got it. Ooh. And only those that are true with God are going to rise. Right, so if you are afraid and you want to be used for the glory of God, just come up and I'm going to pray a special anointing on you.
If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you were to die right now, if you're not sure if you'd be in heaven, you can ask Jesus Christ into your heart right now. Is there anyone that would like to invite Jesus into your heart? Just raise your hand. Anybody this morning want to invite Jesus? Raise your hand. Is there anyone that wants to get right with Jesus? Maybe you've asked Jesus in your heart. Is there anyone this morning that would like to be filled with the infilling of the Holy Spirit like the little kids did on the reservation? They all got filled with the Holy Ghost. They didn't know what hit them. Is there anyone that would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Anyone? Now tonight I'm going to pray for the sick. I want you all to come back. There's going to be a powerful anointing tonight. If you know somebody that's in a wheelchair, blind, deaf, diabetes, arthritis, blood pressure, wheelchair, emphysema, heart problems, blood pressure. If you know anyone that's sick, bring them tonight. Tonight's going to be miracle service for healing. And anyone that's not saved, Anyone? Now listen. They're going to show you a video in a few minutes. And I want you to give like you've never given before. Because you're giving in to souls. Do you believe that we're in the end time? Do you believe that people are dying and going to hell every day? Now, Marty and I spent, because God blessed us, $33,000 came in in two weeks. Which is unheard of to get everything we needed for the tent to do tent meetings but it still cost five or six thousand dollars to do a tent meeting but it used to be ten or twelve thousand to do a tent meeting now because we've got all the equipment we can do one for six thousand or five thousand or even four depending where it is but that's still money that takes and we're on a roll we got people want tent meetings every time we turn around now that we had more that we could have put in, but we just we got trying to do one a month because there's so much work. We're starting a tent meeting Tuesday this week. Tuesday, Marty's up getting it ready pretty soon. So I want you to give like you've never given, because if you believe that we're on the verge of people going to hell and people going to heaven, the gospel is free. But we share it free. But it takes money to get us here to there, to here to there, and to get the groceries and get this and get that that we need. Yeah. And porter pots that we have to rent and whatever, the groceries we have to buy and whatever we have to do. I want you to pray. And I want you to give the best seed because you cannot outgive God. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. What you give to make somebody else get saved, to help this orphanage and help that orphanage. If you want to go to Belize with us, we're going to two orphanages and doing street, three street fairs. We're going to get a whole great big harvest, but we do it all across America. I just flew in from New York and was there and did a tent revival in New York. And two weeks ago, I did a tent revival in New York. We did a big outreach in New York. It all takes finances. You got somebody, Marty and Joan Pierce, that are willing to go and go and go and go and go. <coughs> so if you got somebody that's real, really in the harvest and not afraid of hard work, we'll just keep going until we burn up and go to heaven. But we need your finances. Show the video and I'll turn the meeting over to you. Amen. 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 Go ahead and just turn the lights back on. Now, lift your hand for uh, an offering envelope. Even if you don't plan on giving in this offering, take one anyway and pray. I've found that the best way to live your life is listen to God. Just pray and obey. Man that built the largest church in the world, people ask him, how'd you do it? How'd you do it? He said, I pray and I obey. That's simple. The Holy Spirit already knows 
what he wants you to do concerning Channel of Love Ministries. And so all you have to do is ask him, and then when he speaks to you, which he will, you just do what he tells you to do. <laughs> and I've found in my life that sometimes God has me give an amount that's maybe less than what I thought I you know, should give. Because we don't like, uh, you don't want to give out of your emotions. Amen. Yeah. But right on the other hand, there's been times when he's told me to give things that's caused my emotions. <laughs> and usually it was fear and I had to get over that quick. But uh, just obey God. The thing you, we need to understand is that God is not only helping Marty and Joan do what they're called to do, but he's also having you so this is not about money if you think this is about money just get that out of your head right now yeah. it does take money to function but if you study the subject of money in the bible you'll find that god looks at it from a spiritual perspective and uh, that as we obey him just like you obey him in forgiving someone or you obey him and come into an altar and praying when he tells you to or whatever when you obey him financially you are opening up something in your life that God is going to not only bless you with, but it's going to lead to other things. And that's a whole big, long teaching that I don't have time to go into, except just to say this, just obey God. Yeah. And I will tell you this, I've been pastoring over 30 years, and I've heard it all. I've seen people get up uh, in the pulpit and con people. I've seen people uh, not say a thing about money. I've seen, all, I've seen it all from one spectrum to the other. One thing, one thing I found is that when I talk to the Lord about a need, Amen. He always talks to me about a seed. Yes. <laughs> because that's the way the kingdom, Jesus said, it's the cardinal rule of the kingdom. Whatever you sow, you reap. People are wanting to reap without sowing. And so just obey God. Just pray a simple prayer. Father, what do you want me to do in this offering? Amen. And whatever comes up in, into your mind, as the Bible says, you have the mind of Christ. God can think a thought through your mind. Amen. Then just do it obey him and I'm telling you I have never ever 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 in over 30 years been sorry that I obeyed what he told me to do because on the other end of it was not only a blessing for me but more important than that the blessing of God to go forth to people so father we come before you this morning we thank you for Marty and Joan you've got bigger things for them than they even know and I thank you for all those people that are coming up under them those revivalists, those evangelists, that they're going to oversee a spiritual mother and father. Yes. They're going to uh, impart to them spiritually and impart to them, Father, the things that they might need and even help them oversee the things that uh, they're going to be doing. Thank we thank you for that. Thank we thank you for that ministry base that you have for them. Thank we thank you for that place, Lord, just like that place where your patriarchs met you and that place, God, where they would come back to and there would be a release of a future and a release of all the things that you had. We thank you for that, for Marty and Joan and for the ministry you've called them to. Now, Lord, we ask you just to show us what to do in this love offering. Show us what to do as we sow into the harvest that has already begun. Your word says don't despise the days of small beginnings. We're seeing some signs. We're seeing some small beginnings. But we're soon going to be seeing a full-blown move of God like our nation hasn't seen in many, many, many years. Thank you that we get to be a part of it. Thank you for giving us prophetic insight to see what's ahead. We thank you for that in Jesus' name, and we obey you this, this day. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, of course, I just want to echo what Joan said about tonight. <coughs> Pray and ask God who to have you bring to the service tonight. How many of you know that the Lord, He needs to be in control? Yes. Yeah. The Bible says we're to follow the Holy Spirit. Yes. And so just ask God who might, you might need to bring to the service. If you know somebody that's sick, somebody that's got problems, bring them. There's a healing mantle here. Yes. And I, I'm not bragging and boasting on us. I'm just telling you what God told us. Yes. I don't get up and try to tell you something He didn't tell me. Amen? And there is a calling. I know that this church primarily is in Madeira. Primarily our, our focus in Madeira is prayer and healing. Those are the two main focuses. There are other things God has us do and all that. But there is a healing anointing here. There's a healing mantle here. Sister Joan carries the healing power of God on her life. It goes with the office that she stands in according to the scriptures. 
So bring somebody tonight that needs to be touched by God physically. Amen. And I also want to say this. This morning as I was spending some time with the Lord before uh, we came to church, God told me this morning that he was going to impart some things this morning or he was going to impart to us something that was going to take us into a higher spiritual place. Now listen, of, under, of hearing, comprehending, and moving with him. That was what was preached today. God, take me to that place that I need to go to so that I can be used of you as a revivalist. Well, that's a prophetic move of God in your life. He can quicken you to people. He can show you people in the grocery store. And, you know, all you got to do is ask God, God, this person I'm talking to right now, do you have something for them? And then if, if thoughts come up into your mind or words to share, you just share them. Supernatural power of God. But he's... He's wanting to take us into that place. We've made it much harder than it really is. That's all Jesus did. He walked around listening to his father. Amen. And we, the Bible says we know the voice of the shepherd. Amen. And all we have to do is just say, Lord, make me a blessing today. Give me something to say or pray or be or do for someone. And I'll do that. Because the revival, what we call revival, is going to happen outside of the wall. It's going to happen in here, but it's going to happen out there. And it's going to happen through you. Every, let me just say this last thing. Every need you'll ever have in your life is in your, the obedience to the call of God on your life. It's all there. Waiting for you to walk into it. But we can't do our thing and then try to get God to bless our thing. Amen. We can't ask God to take our problems without giving him our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can see you're excited about that. Hallelujah. But I'll tell you what, you don't lose anything when you give him your life. You get everything. You lose that low life and you find the high life. Hallelujah. Let's stand this morning. Father, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you've said and, and ministered through Job. We thank you for all that was imparted through the laying on of hands. We receive, Lord. All that you've imparted into us, we, we come into agreement with it. Some of it we don't even understand what it is right now in our mind. But we know that as we walk by faith with you, it will come forth. We will understand. We'll walk in it. We'll see it. And I know what you said to me before the service this morning. There's going to be a greater height, a greater depth of your spirit revealing in dreams and visions and moving and people moving in the kingdom of God and the spirit of God. Tremendous things happening to them and through them as they yield to you and all that you desire to do. We bless your people this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you for giving them rest this afternoon. And we thank you for the service tonight, Lord, all that you're going to do and all that you're going to say. Lord, we come with anticipation of seeing you touch and bless people. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.